Today I am going to show you that ergative constructions exist in Jarawara and Tariana languages from Brazilian Amazonia. A fact which has been unnoticed so far by the researchers of these languages, Robert Dixon and Alexandra Eichenwald. For this purpose, first I am going to tell you the classical definition of ergativity, then I am going to show ergative constructions from the Caucasian Kabardian language and uh, the Australian Aranda, Morinipata and Jerbo languages. At last, I am going to show correspondences of ergative constructions from Jarawara and Tariana and uh, in this way I will prove my assertion. Robert M. W. Dixon is the author, with the help of Alan Fogel, of a grammar of the Jarawara language. Alexandra Eichenwald is uh, the author of a Tariana grammar and according to Robert Dixon who is the author of a book on ergativity and uh, of several grammars of Australian languages the term ergati ergativity is used to describe a grammatical pattern in which the subject of an intransitive clause is treated in the same way as the object of a transitive clause, clause and differently from the transitive subject. I will illustrate this assertion with examples from Aranda. Here is a pattern which uh, Dixon calls a sentence with uh, a subject of intransitive verb. Usually this uh, type of sentences are called absolutive sentences. And here we have the man is coming which in Aranda is Ardua Apadyam where man is a, is a noun in the absolutive case with a zero ending and uh, here is uh, the second type of sentence the man is looking at the child this uh, type of sentence usually is called ergative sentence and here the object according Dixon and some other researchers the object of this sentence which in fact is not an object uh, has the same zero ending as the subject of this <coughs> sentence and the actor which is in the ergative case in Aranda takes the ending L so the man is looking at the child Ardola Amba Aram here child is uh, in the absolutive case as here and uh, man is in the ergative case and takes the L, the L ending. 
In fact, here, what Dixon and other researchers call the subject of a transitive uh, sentence is not a subject, but an instrument. And uh, the real meaning of this sentence is the child is looked at by the man. I am not the only linguist who thinks that the ergative has an instrumental meaning. Let's see how a colleague explains the ergative meaning in Walbury from Australia. Subject, verb, object. Okay. So in, in Walbury, because Walbury is an ergative language, stressing Walbury is an ergative language, in an intransitive sentence, intransitive, it looks very much the same as in English or German or other European languages, but when it's transitive, when there's a three-part, I call it a three-part sentence, the man, the drinking, and the water, three parts, it actually resembles the passive in European languages. So the first thing is first, change the sentence to a passive. You have to say, water is drunk by the man. And that's how you... And if we exchange the places of the so-called object and uh, the so-called subject, and instead of the man is looking at the child, we want to say the child is looking at the man, we can only say Ambala Adwa Aram. Dixon's definition of ergativity is not complete because besides being the subject of a transitive sentence, which in fact is an instrument, the noun marked with an ergative case ending is in fact, uh, in fact can act uh, also as an instrument, can show location, direction and so on. I will give examples further. Now, um, examples for absolutive and ergative constructions from the Australian Murini Pata language. Uh, an absolutive sentence, I was looking around. My Murini Pata pronunciation is not uh, correct, maybe, but uh, it doesn't matter. I was looking around. Nai Pam Kado, where Nai means I and is in the absolutive case marked with a zero morpheme. Pam Kado means uh, was looking around. And uh, the ergative sentence, I saw you, will be. Naira Nini Pamnin Kado, where I is already in the ergative case marked with uh, this ending. Nini, you, is uh, an absolutive form, and again we have the verb see to see. I have taken the Murini Pata examples from a study by M. Walsh and uh, at the beginning of uh, his uh, dissertation this researcher has uh, written an acknowledgement to Professor R. M. W. Dixon I am especially indebted for introducing me to the world of Australian linguistics and later supervising my doctoral research and 
dissertation. In Gerbo, a language researched by Robert Dixon, the ergative endings are ngu, gu, or ru, depending on the different uh, noun. And uh, besides, there are noun class markers different for each case, which I am going to call just articles. And so, an absolutive sentence like man is coming in gerbil will be by yara banino where man is yara by article or noun class marker and banino means come and the ergative one man is hitting woman in fact a woman is hit by men will be balan dogumbil bangu yarangu balgan where men in fact by men by the men by a man is bangu yarangu bangu is the article yara means men ngu is uh, the ergative ending Dogumbil means woman, Balan is the article for the absolutive case for this noun class and Balgan means to hit. And now from Australia we go to the Caucasus where the Kabardian language is located and in it an absolutive sentence, the woman is sewing, will be father, mother, where father means woman, the ending re is uh, the absolutive ending for a definite noun, and mother means sew, is sewing, and the ergative. Uh, Sentence The woman is sewing the shirt will be Fazan, Janar, Ed, where woman already takes the ergative ending M, and uh, shirt, Janar, takes the absolutive ending for a definite noun R. Literally, by the woman, I will talk about this song. The additional functions of the ergative case. In Murini Pata, the sentence I will hit you with a club will look like this. Naira, Nini, Nonibabno, Toikumukurra. Which means that uh, in fact, it means by me and by the club you will be hit. Here we have the personal pronoun I in the ergative case with this ergative ending. Uh, the absolutive pronoun you with a zero ending. The verb hit. The noun for weapon club with again with a ergative ending which designates the instrument of the action in fact here we have two instruments instruments the first one is the club and the second one is me you are hit by me and by the club I will hit you with a club. Examples of instrumental ergative, locative ergative and direction ergative from Aranda. 
The first one, the child is covering herself with the blanket. Amba Adalom Blanketla. Here we have child in absolute absolutive case with a zero ending verb the verb for cover and blanket plus the ergative case. The second uh, example, the girl is sitting in the shade. Here we have location, but uh, we can also regard this as an instrument too. The girl is sitting in the shade or with the shade. So we have Mala, Ulala, Anam. Mala, girl. Girl in the absolutive case with a zero ending. Ulava uh, shade plus ergative ending and anam sit. And here we have direction. He went in the night. Ingwala r alok. Literally. Night in or night with, if we regard it as an instrument to ergative case, r, uh, the word for he, the absolutive or, uh, form of he, and alug, to go. Examples from Kabardian for an instrument for a place or location and for time I am sewing the shirt on the sewing machine Sa machinam janar irizot where Sa is I absolute form machinam sewing machine machine in the ergative case janar the shirt in the absolutive case and irizot the verb for so the boy is swimming in the river or in the water shaler psum ios here we have boy in the absolutive case river or water psum in the ergative case and ios swim Hamid works during the day, rests at night. Hamid, Majom, Malajari, Jasham, Majay. Hamid is in the absolutive case, zero ending. Here, Majom during the day, day in the ergative case, Malajari, work, works. Jasham, night in the ergative case, and Majes, direction. The boy went to the town. Shower, column, quash. Here, shower, the boy is in the absolutive case. Column, town is in the ergative case, and quash means to go in the past tense. The ergative can designate absolutely the contrary meaning, the ablative meaning, or uh, showing starting point, a starting point. The hunter comes back from the forest. Shakwar Mazam Kaj. Here Shakwar is the hunter in the absolutive case. Mazam is uh, forest in the ergative case. And Kawakush to come back. Unlike Aranda, Murinipata or Jerbal, in Kabardian, the ergative can 
also designate what is called an indirect object. So the sentence the boy gave the book to the girl in Kabardian will look like this Shalom Tkhosh Tkhalor Hajabzam Yeritash where the book is in the absolutive case but the boy and uh, both the boy and the girl are in the ergative case so here we have a very complex uh, use of the ergative in uh, the other mentioned languages there are special dative cases for this function here is an example of the ergative use of the instrumental use of the ergative in gerbil man is hitting woman with stick balan dogumbil bangu yarango bangu yugungu balgam if my pronunciation is acceptable here balan article dogumbil woman in the absolute case bangu article yara men Yarangu men in the ergative case, Bangu Yugungu article stick in the ergative case, Balgan to hit. Literally, a woman is hit by a man or by the man with a stick. Or more precisely, a woman is hit by a man and by a stick. Now I am going to say several words on synonymy between ergative and other case endings and uh, on combining ergative and other case endings. In Aranda there is a special ablative ending ng. So where from? In this language is ndng. This ablative uh, ending uh, can be replaced by a combination of uh, this ending and the ergative ending l. So the sentence are you two back from school in Aranda will be Mbola Skundela You two absolutive case school from where we have ablative and ergative endings combined. So this is a kind of a second ablative uh, or even second ergative ending and uh, in the example they came from Alkuta Alkodan Gandhyagla Itna Apadyag we have they in the absolutive case and here Alkuta is followed by a combination of three endings the ablative one the ergative one and a third one which uh, maybe also has an ergative or an ablative meaning now let's go back to the Kabardian example I am sewing the shirt with the sewing machine by the way, in this lecture, I am not showing all of the examples. I just show some of them. Uh, 
the first way to say this in Kabardian is as uh, we showed before sa machine janar i result where sewing machine 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 has the ergative ending ma but uh, there is another way to express this and uh, it is with a slightly different verb form and uh, beside the ergative ending added to machina we also use a second ending ch uh, which is called in the grammar books an instrumental ending but it is not uh, a pure instrumental ending because it also has uh, other functions beside expressing the instrument of the sentence so I call it uh, a second ergative ending and in this way I'm sewing the shirt with or on the sewing machine uh, would also be expressed by sa machinam cha janar sot another very important ergative feature of Kabardian is that in this language the ergative ending ma and uh, the absolutive definite ending R can change their places uh, and uh, in this case uh, the difference in the meaning is uh, just uh, very little so and uh, also we have uh, different verb forms so in the in the example the boy reads or is reading the book to the end Shalom, Tchachler, Edge. We have an ergative ending on Shala, boy, and uh, an absolutive ending on book. But uh, the similar sentence, the boy reads the book, will be Shalom, Tchachlem, Yodja. And uh, here, Shower is in the absolutive case uh, and book is in the dative or ergative case. Remember this uh, feature because later we will come back to it again regarding uh, some Amazonian languages and uh, uh, precisely Jarawara. Besides the enumerated functions of the ergative, it can also be used for binding two simple sentences in a compound sentence as in Morin Pata where the sentence the old woman arrived earlier Mutinga Pangandui Munda Knaya where here we have an absolute form and the sentence the old woman hit me Mutingara Nai Pangni Bad These two sentences, these two simple sentences can be uh, bound together in a compound sentence The old woman who arrived earlier hit me Mutinga, absolute form, Pangandui, 
arrived Mundak Nayara earlier on Adverb with uh, an ergative ending Nai, Mi. Absolutive form Pangni Bad Hit. In fact, here we have a nominal, nominalized structure and uh, the, primal, the primary uh, meaning of this sentence was something like uh, I was hit by the earlier arrival of the old woman. The same is observed in Arendatu where the man is coming Adwa Apadyam where Adwa is in the absolutive case and the man is eating meat Adwa Lakara Alguam can be joined into the man is eating meat while he is coming Adwa Kara Alguamala Apadyam Absolute form, absolute form to nominalized verb plus ergative ending and the verb come. In fact, here we have something like uh, the man is coming through eating meat or something like that. The man is coming by his eating meat and so on. Something similar we can see in gerbil when the ergative endings on the left uh, don't coincide with uh, these conjunctional morphemes but uh, both are very similar, which means that earlier these conjunctive morphemes used to be ergative endings too. So, woman went uphill, balando gumbil, winding, and woman saw men, by yara. Bangun Dogumbiru Burun can be made in a compound sentence as woman was going uphill she saw men Bai Yara Bangun Dogumbiru Windinuru Buran Here is the Ergative ending and uh, here is the connecting morpheme and we can see that this one contains the letter in fact these are the ergative endings and these are the relative morphemes and here we have an ergative ending and here we have a relative morpheme but uh, this doesn't change anything in Kabardian there are several types of relative uh, clauses but uh, one of them can be formed again with the help of the of the ergative ending ma. For example, the house which the old man built, Lajaham Yasha Wanar. Here Lajaha means old man. Ma is the ergative uh, conjunction. Unar house, the house and Yasha build and 
now, after having uh, explained the theory of ergativity, I'm going to uh, show some examples from Amazonian languages uh, where ergativity is present too and uh, we'll see that ergativity in Amazonian languages is completely the same as ergativity in Australian or Caucasian languages. In the volume on Amazonian languages edited by Robert Dixon and Alexander Eichenwald, the part on, Carib language, on Caribbean languages written by Derbyshire uh, shows that there are some pure ergative languages such as Akawayo, Arekuna, Makushi, Kuikuru, etc. And Derbyshire writes that Bakairi has split ergative accusative system. A split ergative accusative system. There is written too that all other Carib languages described in this survey have mixed ergative accusative systems but differ in the degree of ergativity and accusativity. In most of them the ergativity does not occur in main clauses but is but is restricted to subordinate constructions with verbs that have been nominalized or adverbalized. Uh, and this shows clearly that uh, the possibility for Jarawara and Tariana to be ergative is highly uh, possible too highly real, quite real. In the same volume, regarding the Macroge language family, Rodriguez shows that ergative characteristic features possess uh, languages such as Timbira, Mahakali, Kipea, etc. For the Panoan language family, Luz writes that it has commonly been observed that in many Pano languages the ergative marker N and the markers for possessive, locative and instrumental are homophonous, like in Kabardian, Aranda and so on. This is my remark. And uh, some Pano languages, such as Wariapano, have a split system. Uh, before illustrating this with concrete examples, from another volume, Ergativity in Amazonia, edited by Gilde and uh, Quay Salos, I will uh, show ergative constructions from uh, the Mayuruna branch of the Panoan family, but before this I will read a sentence from the article by Halos e Gilday that ergative constructions can drift towards accusativity, losing ergative patterns one by one, beginning with syntax and later arriving at morphology until the construction no longer contains an ergative pattern at all. This also supports my assertion that Jarawara and Tariana are ergative 
languages or more precisely were ergative languages before and uh, there we can observe exactly this process here in the Matses language of the Mayuruna branch of the Panoan family an absolutive sentence like Davy slept Davy an English name or Duno slept Duno Matses name will look like this Debi zero ending Ushbondash or Duno zero ending Ushbondash here the name is in the absolutive but in the ergative we'll have Davy likes you where Davy or Debbie in Matses already have an ergative ending you maybe is in the absolutive and like is bunek debin maybe bunek or uh, more correct you are liked by Davy by Davy you are liked something like this and now pay attention that in Matses the ergative ending N can express not only the pseudo the pseudo subject of the sentence but also possession and the instrument of the action. I forgot to tell you that in Kabardian the ergative ending M uh, can also be used for expressing possession. So the student's book uh, would be Uchenikam Kniga, both loan words from Russian. We, here we have the ergative ending M. So in Matses the bad man hit Tumi's dog with a stick. Here we have man bed plus ergative ending. Tumin opa, Tumi's dog. Here n is the Matses equivalent of the English possessive marker s or s. This means hit, and here the instrument is expressed by the same ergative ending N question with stick so Dada Iksan Tumin Opa Kuesosh question the bad man hit Tumis dog with a stick man bad by Tumis dog hit was literally in addition in Matses, the ergative ending N can also be used in a lo locative function to show place, location. I will sleep in a hammock. Din ush hebi. Here, hammock is D and N is the ergative ending. And we see that in this case, this ending shows location. Din ushkebi hamak in. I will sleep. In another Amazonian language, Trumai, we also have absolutive and ergative constructions. For example, he jumps ine achikida. Here, ine he is in the absolutive case or form and has a zero ending but in he deceived you inek he hotaka we have already inek which means ine he plus the ergative ending k he you is in the absolutive uh, case and hotaka means deceive now remember that in the 
Caucasian Kabardian language, we can exchange the ergative and absolutive endings in the sentence and uh, to have a sentence with almost the same meaning. It is not surprising for me that the same phenomenon can be seen in Trumai from Amazonia because this ergative construction according to me is uh, the oldest and the primary means of expressing many grammatical meanings in the language. So, in Trumai, the sentence the dog beat me, as in Kabardian, could be uh, built in two ways. The first way, the dog, the word for dog, kasoro, with an ergative ending k, kasorok ha tako, the dog me beat, or by the dog, by the dog I was beaten. Here kasoro has the ergative ending, and me is in the absolutive form with a zero ending. The second way to say this is Kasoro make haito. <clears throat> Here, Kasoro dog is in the absolutive case with a zero ending. And here we have uh, a dative form of the personal pronoun, me, uh, in fact I, literally it means to me. It's almost the same as in Kabardian. And now I'm going to talk about the Jarawara language and here I will show you how Robert M. W. Dixon who was the author of a book on ergativity author of several Australian grammars and co-author along with uh, Alan Fogel of a grammar of the Jarawara language has missed the fact that this language contains ergative constructions like the Australian languages which Robert Dixon researched. I have to notice that the book by Dixon and Fogel on Jarawara was awarded the Leonard Bloomfield Award from the Linguistic Society of America in 2006. Unlike a research on Jarawara written only by Alan Fogel, which is easy to read. The book by Dixon and Fogel is quite hard to read. It took me two years to study it. And uh, I have to say that Dixon's memoirs are also hard to read. And uh, It was not surprising for me that Dixon hasn't noticed the presence of ergativity in Jarawara because in these memoirs he wrote While still in 1948 uh, there was a magnificent Kabardian grammar by Yakovlev which I have used for this lecture, for this lecture 
Dixon wrote in 1983 in his memoirs that when I explained something of the structure of gerbil to Halliday, he said, lovely, I like ergative language. And Dixon writes further, I hadn't heard the term ergative before. It hadn't come up in any of the lectures I'd had in Edinburgh or in the books I'd read. And in another place he writes to linguists call this U in the in the Australian Barbaran language ergative case inflection. Although I did not know this was the appropriate term until I returned to London and Halliday told me about it. Regarding the Dixon's writing style, he himself acknowledges that, again in his memoirs, I'd, I'd written a draft grammar of, Dir of Gerbo during 1966, but was now dissatisfied with it. It tried to make a contribution to linguistic theory using all sorts of neologistic terminology, in effect putting the language second to the theory, referring to aspects of the grammar only as needed for linguistic model making. When I got back in May 1967, I decided to start all over again. I now had a better understanding of how the language worked and my aim would be to try to describe it as clearly as possible, with the minimum of pseudo-scientific jargon. Unfortunately, Dixon didn't do so regarding his Jarovara grammar. According to Dixon, Jarovara is mostly analytical language. So, uh, a sentence like the dog is big in Jarawara will be Yome Nafika. Yome, Dixon writes it with G and Fogel with Y. Yome means dog or also a jaguar and Nafika means to be bigger. This is an equivalent of, of an uh, absolutive sentence and the dog uh, and the sentence the dog ate the clothes in Jarawara will be Yome Makari Kabehinoka where Yome is the word for dog, Makari the word for clothing and Kabehinoka means eat, eats, eat, or ate, in fact. Similarly, in Jarawara, we can also say, I also shot a tapir, or I also shot a jaguar, or I also shot a dog. Awi, Tao, Okubi, Sahara, Oke. Oke means I, Awi, Tapir. And this means to shoot. Or Yome Tao Okubi Sahara Oke. I I shot a jaguar. And uh, we must have in mind that uh, in Jarawara there is an accusative ending Ra which is used only by older people uh, like in this example Tawija married my other younger sister Okasima Onera Tawija Iti uh, Tawija Iti my sister Okasima One, another, Ra is the accusative ending, Tawia, name, Iti, 
merit. In Jarawara, according to me, there is an ergative ending ya with variants niya, kaya, karo, kari, which is the Jarawara equivalent of the Aranda L, Kabardian M, Murini, Murinipat R, Odirbal R. And uh, in Jarawara we don't have examples for the uh, use of the ergative ending ya in a position of subject of uh, a transitive clause, uh, of a transitive sentence according to Dixon's definition but we have uh, examples where we find this uh, ending in other meanings expressing other meanings for example the instrumental meaning my uncle scrapes the prow of the canoe with a small knife here the knife the small knife is the instrument of the action in this sentence kanawa tati yamawa bite ya okubise sirihine kanawa means canoe tati prau yamawa knife bite small ya means with which uh, Dixon uh, defines as a post position or a peripheral marker Okubise means my uncle and Sirihine means scrape as we see here we have a complex ending like Niya or Kaya this Ka could be a prefix a commutative prefix and in this sentence they come with us literally they accompany us otara me ka kiha where otara means us me means they and ka kiha means accompany or in bulgarian supervoshdat and this ka corresponds to the English prefix ak and to the Bulgarian prefix s. Two more examples for the commutative meaning of the ergative ending ya. The Branko or the white man died together with his dog. Yara kahabaka Yome ya. Yara means white man in the absolutive according to me. Kahabaka die past tense. Yome dog ya ergative ending. Oh I'm going to be with the Jarawara people, be with them. Yarawara me ya. Otaba oke me ya. Here, Yarawara, the name of the Jarawara tribe, me means them in the ergative case with the ergative ending ya. Otaba to be with, oke, I in the absolutive case, and me ya with them literally them with again we see the ergative ending ya yeah. so we can see that in Jarawara a compound ergative ending like ka ja is the equivalent
equivalent of the compound double ergative ending M ch in Kabardian or the triple ergative ending Ngandela in Aranda. And like in Kabardian, the Jaravara ergative ending ya or kaya beside expressing the instrument or the companion of the action in the sentence can express also the direction allative case uh, the starting point ablative or motion through something prolative so exactly as in Kabardian in Jaravara we can have I'm going back to Porto Velho O comma okay botofeo ya O comma means go back okay I in the absolutive case botofeo Porto Velho ya tu and this ya again is the ergative ending and as in Kabardian this ergative ending can express totally the opposite meaning not to but from I'm coming from Porto Velho ok ok botofeo ya ok come in this case ok uh, I in the absolutive botofeo Porto Velho ya the ergative uh, ending which in this case means from remember how this happened in Kabardian and finally we went through the forest Ota Tokahamaro Ota Ake Yamakabani Kaya Ota we in the absolutive case Tokahamaro be in motion uh, Ota Ake we in the absolutive case Yamakabani means forest and Kaya through the ergative ending the ergative ending ka ya and uh, this uh, complex ending is similar uh, to the above mentioned complex ergative endings in Aranda for example or in Kabardian remember the Kabardian another example where we find an ergative ending expressing location in a canoe and another compound ergative ending niya expressing direction they arrive down at their mother's place in a canoe kanawa ya me kobo kane samakiha me ka ami niya where kano, kanawa ya is the ergative form of kano, me, they, absolutive form, me, ka, there, ami, place, plus an ergative ending, plus a compound ergative ending. Finally, two more examples uh, where the ergative in Jarawara can designate the indirect object of a, se of a sentence. And uh, here, in this example, you give me the knife, you give the knife to me, imperative. We have exactly the same as in Kabardian or in Trumai. Here we see that the ergative ending ya in the one case can be added to the pseudo object of the sentence imawa knife, but in the other case here. Imawa knife 
is in the absolutive and uh, has a zero ending. Imawa tati nahi o ya. You give the knife to me. Absolute form for knife give you in the absolutive and here to me literally me too in a dative ergative case and down it's the opposite owa te kawahi imawa ya here the ergative ending is added to the word for knife And at the end of the Jarawara part, we can conclude or we can assume, assume that at an earlier stage of the, of the language development, there were ergative structures in this language where the so-called subject of a transitive sentence had the ergative ending ya yeah. and then the sentence the dog ate, ate the clothes would look, uh, would look like this yome ya makare kabehinoka where yome ya is the ergative form makare plus zero ending is the absolutive form here this uh, example is in the accusative Kabehinoka eat <coughs> and uh, besides in Jarawara we also have <coughs> that feature that the ergative ending can serve for binding two simple clauses in a compound one and it is said in the Dixon's and Fogel's book where it writes a nominalized, nominalized clause plus ya may have the following types of meaning time of day when time relation between two clauses when after a while until etc place a logical relation if since because reason since because goal and so on there are many uh, examples given in the book but i'm going to show you all, only one of them for example we arrive where safato lives <coughs> safato winaya ota kobonake here, the ergative ending ya serves as a <coughs> conjunction, but in fact, since this uh, phrase is nominalized, we have a slightly different meaning as. <coughs> in the examples from Aranda and the other languages before we arrive where Safato lives Safato wine ya ota hobonake and now let's talk about Tariana according to Eichenwald in this language there are core cases and oblique cases and what is uh, more important under certain circumstances a noun can receive case marking from both from both sets of endings besides the use of case markers depends on topicality and focality of the noun and like Aranda, Kabardian or Jarawara 
The morphemes used with nouns also can mark complement and subordinate clauses. The description of the Tariana case system is uh, quite, by Eichewald is quite uh, complex. So I am giving you a simplified model where we have subject endings which can be zero ending, a zero ending, ne or ne, non-instrumental or non-locative indirect object endings. Again, a zero ending plus na and another ending, nuko or nako, which according to me is an ergative ending. Besides, there are simple instrument, instrumental or commutative object endings such as uh, ne or ine, simple locative, etc. because there are other meanings to endings which are a zero ending or se and compound instrumental or locative endings ne nuko or se nuko. Here we observe exactly the same thing as in uh, Aranda or <coughs> Kabardian, a combination of several endings, one at least one of which is an ergative ending. Examples for subject markers in Tariana. The Jaguar was frightened. Dihayawi Harami. Here we have Yawi for Jaguar, Diha is an article, a zero ending and a verb. He went Diha ne diakani. Here we have a subject ending ne and again a verb. Examples of non-instrumental and non-locative object endings in Tariana. The dog stole the fish. Chino kuphe dinetumakha. Where dog is chino, uh, fish is kuphe, and both have zero endings. He offered them fish. Nana kuphe nuku diwalita. Here we have to them nana na is day uh, na the second na is uh, a dative uh, ending kuphe fish nuku in this case according to me is an ergative marker we must not forget that uh, ergative markers can be added to pseudo objects too, like in Kabardian or in Trumai. And here I gave you this house. Ha da pana nuku pina noaka. Again <coughs> a pseudo object with an ergative ending. Examples of simple instrumental objects. Then he went by canoe. Ne itauhe ne diuka dirachta. Here the word for canoe has an instrumental ending, but we, we, uh, it is uh, not only instrumental, but the semantics is locative too. Uh, he went with him. Dihane diakhani dine. In the first case, this ending ne is a subject case. Uh, in the second, it means with him, literally him with. Dine, here we have an instrumental or commutative ending. But uh, this may not be only a coincidence because this could be 
a second ergative ending or even a first ergative ending in the Rihanna besides Nuku. Simple locative ending se. In fact, it shows not only location but also direction and time. For example, they worked in a different place. Paule se nech pani pida. Here, the ending se shows location. They went into water. Napidana unise. Here, se shows direction. Alative ending. And here, in the afternoon, we fall asleep. Deikina se dainotiki. In this case, se shows time, expresses time. And here we see how the instrumental ending ne or ine can be combined with the ergative ending nuku. She exchanged the child with the pestle. Diha da jeda ne nuku dhoe paneta. Here the pestle takes two endings. The instrumental ending ne, which could be a sort of an ergative ending, and uh, the other ergative ending nuko. Stay with them. Na ine nuko pitia. Here the pronoun them, they takes. Uh, the same two endings, only here we have the second variant INE. And here, for us it is today. In fact, we have something like an indirect object. Phanenuku ikasuna ka. To us, for us, it is today. Locative se plus ergative nuku. I'll go back to it in my very house. Nunha nudian hua nu ya da pana se nuku. Here, this uh, I should be in the absolutive case. And the word for my house has two endings, a locative one and an ergative one. And since I got tired, I will only say that in Tariana 2, the ergative marker nuko can be also used in compound sentences to join, uh, to bind to simple sentences there. He took the shirt and put it on while they were looking. Dihat hita dinapidana nhane nakaka nuko. You can see details in Eichenwald's book and in my article on this topic, which is going to appear soon. That's why I'm not going to explain uh, all the elements and so on. I will only say that if we take the real sentence, the real Tariana sentence, he offered them fish, Nana kuphenuku diwalita, where the ergative ending is on fish, and uh, the the hypothetical sentence, the dog stole the fish, with an ergative ending to to dog chino, 
Чинонуко, Купхе, Динетоматха, Уэа, Фиш, Купхе, is in the absolutive here, will have exactly the same relation between two different sentences in Tariana as uh, we saw this happen in Kabardian or in Tromai. It's cold here, not like in Amazonia. <laughs>